Next up, we have AMU trading under the ASX code EMU with a market capitalization of approximately $3 million. The company is an emerging Australian copper exploration company focused on new discoveries. Presenting for the company today, we have CEO Doug Grewer. Doug, welcome to the network. Please take it away. Thank you, Peter, and welcome everybody. Uh, this is a great opportunity to talk about our newly named Yataga Copper Project, which is situated in far north Queensland at Georgetown. Um, so this presentation today, I'm going to just speak about this copper project, EMU as an explorer of um, mainly copper and gold, precious and base metals, uh, has um, a couple of other smaller projects, but this has taken our focus, particularly in the last nine months or so, where there's been an enormous amount of work and incredible amount of success. In fact, to the point that in my 40 years uh, involved in the mining industry, um, this is something that uh, I, I wake up every morning with a great deal of excitement. Um, our, our exploration work just keeps on building uh, a tremendous story uh, to the point that we're now uh, looking at uh, the potential for uh, a project that might deliver billions of tonnes of copper. Uh, next slide, please. And the next one too, please. And yes, so Georgetown is a, a historic mining town and a district. Uh, the area is host to over a thousand mines, prospects and mineral occurrences. We have a farm in um, opportunity up there with three exploration tenements covering approximately 850 square kilometres. There's a plethora of precious metals and base metals uh, in the area that have been determined. Uh, and we've looked at uh, eight scale, potential scale prospects for gold, copper, silver and lead to date. And importantly, uh, the Yataga Copper Project, which is the one that has given us uh, the focus. Next slide, please. So the Yataga Copper Project um, is a project that sits within a very large intrusive body called the Yataga igneous complex. It's approximately 70 square kilometres of a granitoid intrusion and it sits within one of our exploration tenements uh, or our exploration tenements uh, cover most of, of this igneous complex. The, the igneous uh, or the copper project itself has now got two uh, prospects been identified. The first one, the Fiery Creek copper prospect was the, our original discovery prospect. Now geologists were looking um, in reconnaissance at an area to the north, which was an old historic uh, drill site, and they followed um, the, the veins or, or what looked to be outcropping veins uh, to the south and entered our tenement area, uh, an area called Fiery Creek, where we've got, as I say, outcropping copper veins, um, stock work and secondary mineralisation across the surface. This is a very significant discovery. Um, we've made a, a few announcements on it and we've been back numerous times to continue our development of that. But very, very excitingly, uh, in August, we completed a comprehensive survey over the Otago Valley Prospect, newly named, in that very large shear zone that runs approximately six kilometres long and two kilometres wide. And uh, our geology teams sampled more than 1,150 termite mounds and subject to XRF methodology, we were able to determine significant copper anomalism in a very, very broad area. Uh, in fact, the copper anomalism uh, we're calling anomalous is more than 150 parts per million, which is indicates um, and the results sit within five to 25 times the normal crustal abundance of copper that you would normally find in granites. So this is a huge discovery. Um, next slide, please. We found the Yataga Valley copper prospect uh, because we uh, engaged a drone LIDAR survey of the, the granitoid, about 27 square kilometres. It was one of the largest drone LIDAR um, surveys ever done in Australia, apparently. And the results from that came back were absolutely stunning. Uh, our geology teams were uh, able to see with the stripped back vegetation, because this is an extremely difficult uh, area to, to get into. Stripping back the vegetation with the photogrammetry work and the LIDAR, we're able to see these, these very long 
and wide shear zones through the centre of the granitoid. It just didn't make any sense. Uh, the Fiery Creek um, prospect showed outcropping veins, but the Yatarga Valley Copper prospect, the larger, longer one there, um, didn't demonstrate anything other than uh, what we found in the termite mound sampling just recently. So the recent work now um, has identified an area of approximately eight square kilometres of that uh, copper in soil anomalism. Um, the, the modelling of the surface mineralisation indicates the presence of multiple copper bearing intrusive centres at or close to surface. This is very, very exciting because a lot of a lot of copper deposits can be very deep, particularly when we're talking about porphyry styles. We think that, and I'll talk to it soon, we think there's an erosion that's that's down to the top of the cupola or the porphyry systems and um, centres that we're seeing, and I'll go through the model shortly. One of the interesting things is the work that we've done with our technical team and our, and our, um, our experts in this area. We've identified that the Highland Valley copper mine in British Columbia, which is the largest open pit copper mine in Canada and one of the largest in the world, has very, very similar um, model to is a very similar model to what we have been looking at in the early stage. So the plutonic copper porphyry mineralization provides us great encouragement for the for a very, very large scale copper project. Next slide, please. The Fiery Creek Prospect, which was the one we first discovered. We took rock samples from that and incredible results, 32.5% copper and 14 ounces of silver, our top numbers, from, uh, from outcropping quartz breccia hosted veins. Um, as I mentioned, about 1600 by 1750 outcropping copper veins up to two metres wide um, almost um, qualifies itself to be a walk-up drill target um, without the 3D ge geometry below. Uh, so we're, we're interpreting this as a shallow, constrained porphyry copper system, um, has extensive copper mineralisation at surface through that whole Fiery Creek area. And we've also got multi-element assays now pointing to a lot of polymetric, it's a copper polymetric system with a lot of anomalism in Pathfinder minerals as well. Next slide, please. So our work program um, for 2024 uh, 2024, since Christmas um, this year, when we first made the discovery in Defari Creek and assessed the the rocks from that from that field trip, we've um, we put together a systematic uh, and very comprehensive exploration program. Um, we've been absolutely delighted to secure the services of Dr. Greg Morrison, who's 45 years experience in the metallogenic um, geology that is similar to the Otago Copper Project in, in Queensland. Uh, Greg is well known globally for his experience, um, having written many, many technical papers and uh, is the is the go-to geologist for this area. And we've also um, managed to maintain the services of economic consulting geologist uh, Nigel Maund. Um, so we've been delighted to have those two people guide our and, and assist us in our in our understanding. We've finished um, approximately six geochemistry surveys and we are in the process of completing our second geophysical survey. Um, the geophysical surveys are intended to give us um, a three-dimensional look at the geometry of what might lie belief, uh, beneath the expression of copper on surface. We've used um, XRF uh, as XRF over termite mounds as the, as the principal methodology or the method for the so, uh, soil um, anomalism uh, or the sampling. Um, this is a, a very interesting uh, methodology and um, it has proved to be significantly accurate for EMU and the work that we've done. We've currently got um, geophysics surveys underway. We've got a uh, pole dipole IP MT survey on ground, about 20 to 30 kilometer line. Uh, and uh, we've got some more geochemistry work with rock identification. We're looking at uh, the mineralization from fluid flow geometry uh, from the central core area. So we're actually looking at tracking where this mineralization is coming from and trying to get the vectors that allow us um, to pinpoint where it might be possible to drill. We completed Aboriginal Heritage Survey 
and we're starting to model uh, to model now and optimize our drill target selection. Next slide, please. This is our conceptual model based on the Highland Valley mine in BC, Canada. So this cartoon shows the uh, source, the potential target zone source, uh, and the erosion level that you can see the current surface level at your target with the two prospects, Fiery Creek on the right and your target valley on the left. You'll note that the Fiery Creek prospect is, uh, is, is a little higher, but sits on the roof of the Pluton. It's a, it's a very interesting model and uh, everything at the moment is, is adding up uh, to what we've got here. Next slide, please. Some samples that we're picking up in Fiery Creek, absolutely scattered everywhere through this through the area. Next slide, please. Up and coming exploration, as I mentioned, we've got an infield rock collection program, more geochemistry, and the two geophysics programs, and we're preparing vectors for our drilling program. Next slide, please. Investment summary. I guess the key thing for this is that within the area and very close to what we're doing here, we've also collected from Bonanza style gold that we reported before, we've got epithermal gold and mesothermal gold systems within the area. And we'll be bringing those results to market very, very soon. Next slide, please. That does it. Thank you very much, Peter. Doug, thank you. Thanks for the presentation. Uh, we do have a few questions that have come through. So the first one is, can you explain the recent, recent findings regarding the copper animal, anim animalism at the Yadiga Valley Copper Prospect? Uh, can I find that? Let's just say that again, Peter. We're looking at, um, can I define them, did you say? Can you explain the recent findings regarding the copper yeah. anomalism at the Yadiga well, Valley Copper Prospect? Well, in that model, which I probably didn't give enough time to, we're suggesting that there is a source of copper that's expressed uh, itself to surface and given an enormous uh, anomalism to surface through through the shear zone. Um, the core of which the core area of which we've identified both within the Otago Valley prospect and within the Fiery Creek prospect, these are to be um, further further uh, collated, pulled together, uh, modelled around geophysics uh, for vectors for drilling. Thank you. Uh, so just on the Fiery Creek Copper Prospect, you did mention it. What were the initial findings from the original copper animalism discovery and how do they compare to the Yadiga Valley findings? Yeah, so they're very similar. In fact, they're, they're yep. matched. Uh, the, the anomalism is very, very similar. The difference is that at Fiery Creek, the veins and the stock work and the disseminated mineralization is at surface. So we can actually see it at surface um, where the Otago Valley Prospect uh, came up through only through the termite mound uh, um, uh, methodology. And bearing in mind, termite mounds similar to an auger type drilling because the, the termites burrow down up to 70 metres deep. Uh, studies have shown between 8 and 70 metres deep and they bring up the materials and the mineralisation to the surface and in, the, in their mounds. So the higher the mound, usually the deeper that the, the termites have gone. Doug, thank you. That's all we have time for. Uh, have a great weekend. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, everyone.